An excerpt from Chapter 4 of Theodore Roosevelt, an Autobiography by Theodore Roosevelt. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. An excerpt from Chapter 4 of Theodore Roosevelt, an Autobiography by Theodore Roosevelt. LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, Number 6 In consequence, I never spent more than two days on the journey from whatever the point was at which I left the little Missouri, sleeping the one night for as limited a number of hours as possible. As soon as I reached the meeting place, I would find out the wagon to which I was assigned. Riding to it, I turned my horses into the saddle band and reported to the wagon boss, or, in his absence, to the cook, always a privileged character, who was allowed and expected to order men around. He would usually grumble savagely and profanely about my having been put with his wagon, but this was merely conventional on his part. And if I sat down and said nothing, he would probably soon ask me if I wanted anything to eat, to which the correct answer was that I was not hungry and would wait until meal time. The bedding rolls of the riders would be strewn around the grass, and I would put mine down a little outside the ring, where I would not be in anyone's way, with my six or eight branding irons beside it. The men would ride in, laughing and talking with one another, and perhaps nodding to me. One of their number, usually the wagon foreman, might put some question to me as to what brands I represented, but no other word would be addressed to me, nor would I be expected to volunteer any conversation. Supper would consist of bacon, Dutch oven bread, and possibly beef. Once I won the good graces of my companions at the outset by appearing with two antelope which I had shot. After supper I would roll up in my bedding as soon as possible, and the others would follow suit at their pleasure. At three in the morning or thereabouts, at a yell from the cook, all hands would turn hurriedly out. Dressing was a simple affair, then each man rolled and quartered his bedding. If he did not, the cook would leave it behind, and he would go without any for the rest of the trip, and came to the fire, where he picked out a tin cup, tin plate, and knife and fork, helped himself to coffee and to whatever food there was, and ate it standing or squatting as best suited him. Dawn was probably breaking by this time, and the trampling of unshod hoofs showed that the night wrangler was bringing in the pony herd. End of an excerpt from Chapter 4 of Theodore Roosevelt, an Autobiography.